or coin price action shows us the chances of an odd season this time it's gonna be huge and the all season can be actually going towards at least 250 percentage in the short term just measuring the target of this particular trend now when we look at this pattern and the breakout here now we have only reached 40 percentage so still 200 percentage of that is left and within that 40 percentage we can actually see this stuff mm -hmm. and combining comparing ethereum to xrp in uh, 30 days it's not that bad right the returns and if you look at the top 10 uh, it's not bad but looking at one year or a quarter we can see that xrp is still in red and that for me is showing you like okay this asset hasn't actually run to the upside yet so the potential return on your investment if i'm buying here for me that looks you know like a shining star and the fun fact is that this all are happening at a time when the world is looking at the reality or practical applicability of money printing mm -hmm. in one aspect to another and in this particular video the imf chief actually says you know drivers of change and they embrace it now the way they actually pose that looks like you know cool and in the video uh Feimur actually highlights at the end that imf has all always kind of uh, embraced ripple's technology and the way they actually present that mm -hmm. so yes ripple has to be understood because they are looking at the drivers of change and ripple the company was listed in top 50 disruptors you guys remember that so in that aspect now that even you know banks actually coming out and showing like pensions are going to be getting nothing because the interest rates are going to be on the negative side and if the rates are negative and you know the pension funds don't get anything there is no chances that they need to continue in that just giving fees instead they should be looking for an alternative asset class to invest in and that investment is in for a decade of digitization and tokenization and you have to actually choose that wisely why because now it's not only that economic issue but along with that us is coming out with sanctions eu is coming out with sanctions so it's now a world of sanctions as we see us is actually looking again at chinese software companies which are like you know gigantic companies right so yes this chinese mind coin may run well in those nations where you know they have sanctions but others may actually corner them as just first generation crypto you know yesterday's video we detailed and discussed about the first generation and second generation crypto and they highlighted that first generation crypto is not good for payments and they gave the details for that now if that is correct we are in for a second generation crypto and an altcoin run so in this altcoin run i doubt completely the utility will kick in until the market is mature so we can't actually take that away from the coins which doesn't actually have that much of fundamentals but still if you look at the return on your investment that would be there because if you compare that to the all-time highs what you can see is the percentage to the all-time highs for xrp compared to ether is way much higher mm -hmm. and then it's bitcoin cash and other networks which kind of works on you know the proof of work and other stuff but when we actually analyze that we should also understand the fundamentals are going to reflect into the price soon because we are entering into a new market cycle Welcome to the Scientific Investor family where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly. If you so value for your time in the contents presented in the intro, please hit that like button. Now let's proceed. Now all of these are actually happening in an era of all season mm -hmm, and economic capitulation and when we are entering a digitized and tokenized world. Yes, that's right. It's getting really interesting. And as we talk about the fundamentals and crypto investments coming into crypto we actually have to understand this one this article kind of shows us what this industry is going to be currently we can actually understand from that tiny teeny bit which was previously considered and now it actually reached a multi-billion dollar industry and it's kind of revolutionizing the entire sector here he talks like the most misunderstood asset that most people do not understand or do not want to understand is XRP and we should agree with that right whenever we see Fudsters coming out they kind of says it's a bangers coin or it's completely centralized and you know most of them kindly use these stuffs but is this true those who are educated enough 
well educated enough about the fundamentals and the reality of the asset XRP know that no that's not the fact. In fact, if critics, haters and especially Bitcoin maximals sat down and did a good extensive research they would realize that nothing of these are true for XRP and at the same time for utility side from crypto inside you can consider say Ether or Bitcoin they are, when the network is congested and the network is too uh, you know high of traffic and huge fees they kind of jump into different uh, one which can scale those transactions and mostly last time we saw that they are actually using XRP Ledger to do that and that's not a bad thing for XRP Ledger but it kind of shows or highlights the drawbacks of those networks of proof of uh, work or proof of stake systems. Now XRP is not only or is not only a banker's coin it's actually trying to go against the corrupt and over uh, broken financial banking system. We should be understanding that and how they are doing that they are leveraging the coin XRP or the asset XRP with its technology to revolutionize that one. Now when we use the term revolutionize it really is happening from one country to another when we look it's actually happening and Ripple the company is kind of building the entire infrastructure by keeping their time there spending their money there everything is actually going on the way. Now one of Ripple's top investments revealed new XRP banking platform like we previously talked about the Zum app and PolySign how these are actually turning up. Now we can also understand PolySign is also acting as a bank for crypto and we know that in the digitized world it should be there right and when we actually talk about those things we need to consider these two things into our mind because recently we saw Bank of America is expanding itself how it's actually being integrated into Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay and also the digital wallets of corporates mm. so that kind of sounds like the distributed apps and why it is important because Ripple the company chose that path Previously, there was kind of critics coming out and stating, no, 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 it was better to go for the smart contracts, which Ethereum already overtook now, right? If they were chosen that path at that time, they would have been benefited. Now, yeah, I agree based on the current uh, developments, you can actually argue that one. But this statement from Mickey, I completely agree with him on this one. Ripple backed off smart from the smart contracts previously and they have actually went in and progressed in the distributed application side right and we can actually understand that really is happening now one of these documents here highlights that ripple already had the smart contracts platform which is the code is now along with their technology of xrp to do or execute that payment mm -hmm. if they are using polysign say as a custody for a banking app they need to use smart contracts now yes they can use ethereum as a smart contract platform but to do that value exchange they need xrp now yes they can combine both xrp ledger and the ethereum platform that's not an issue but once they are moving into intelligent protocol that doesn't actually make any issue for us now when we look again at this one it talks like ripple has recently restarted the development of Codius, mm -hmm. a platform of smart contracts whose new version still to be released. So when they are working it in a way that it will be integrated with XRP Ledger. So as we were discussing, if they don't need a smart contract platform connected to XRP Ledger and their new banking system, they would not actually spend their time on this one and to work on that right for e-commerce this scenario is similar no integration solutions have yet been presented between xrp ledger and the platforms that support e-commerce operations so wherever we are looking at the from the giants like amazon alipay apple pay and all i don't think they will be going into ethereum network because if they have to actually transfer from value from their ledger towards that using a smart contract yes it is better for them to jump into an intelligent protocol mm -hmm. and directly use xrp ledger if they are jumping directly into the xrp ledger then uh, for them using the uh, or integrating into the intelligent protocol would be so easy to do so they won't actually be jumping into different uh, smart contracts platform and that's what i kind of assume and here what i say is many contracts will have a relatively simple and easy to understand logic built upon top of the well-known and widely used modules so here when they talk about that connection to the bitcoin or xrp ledger right they can also include more advanced features such as a standard auction escrow and bond implements now most of them are actually going for the escrows mm -hmm. so codius uses modules identified by hashes that can be shared and imported by multiple contracts this makes it so easy as a smart contract platform for others to understand. Mm -hmm. 
And here, which he's highlighting is the future of autonomous applications. Yes, smart contract is future of autonomous applications. And when they integrate that with the exchange of value, that becomes the new financial system. The smart network conversion theory. Now, that's not much <coughs> considering what we explained. So <coughs> then, then considering all of this, when we are stated Alipay, Amazon, Apple Pay and others giants entering this market, this also kind of gives us a clarification why Bank of America is kind of extending its uh, reach. Mm -hmm. And they are providing wallets, right? So when we see corporate digital wallets for treasury payments, we should be going, mm, that sounds cool. And here it's actually connected with these payment platforms and the distributed apps. When this becomes one thing to another, like distributed apps for payment, which are being interconnected on a single ledger, then that is the universal platform for payments, right? So that is why we are always looking on the Interledger protocol. And where does that take us? Something similar, right? In conclusion, re leading financial think tanks thinks Ripple could replace banking system. And that's what we were saying, right? All these fundamentals are kind of leading to an area which is kind of being dominated by Ripple, the company. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are working with different central banks. They are working with different corporates and they are creating solutions that kind of solves the pain point or existing uh, issues. And that's what actually we need. Now, let's go into the technical analysis side and analyze uh, charts. See, this one, first we'll actually go into the XRP chart hmm, on a daily. Now, okay, uh, we'll jump into a three-day chart because it, it kind of gives us a conclusion like where the price accumulation zone was and where the price accumulation zone looks like as of now. In a three-day chart, we can see that last time we tried and approached the 200-day moving average, but we couldn't manage to actually move above that. We was, like the price was actually uh, rejected from that level and we came down. Now, zooming in, we can actually understand this time we are currently above the 200-day moving average on a three-day chart. If we move into it to one-day chart, we already understood that we are way above the 200-day moving average. There can be a pullback coming back and testing this uh, moving average zone. And that could be somewhere around, say, the moving average would be coming up. The price would be coming down. So can be around 0.25 area. But considering that we already moved above this moving average, uh, uh, the accumulation zone here, the price can actually stay there for a bit. If you look at the Wyckoff uh, technique, you may understand that we made that spring here. We went to the upside once, corrected back here, then now moving above that. So if we uh, check that Wyckoff uh, charting pattern, accumulation zone, for us, it would be easy to understand. We'll just jump into the images and take one. See, in this particular one, if you actually look at that, you can actually see one thing, which is the SOS here, right? Mm -hmm. This is the spring here, which uh, we kind of received here. In the spring, if you consider the price, zoom out, we, we can actually understand we just went a little below the previous bottom of this cycle here. Now, if we are looking at only the, this cycle coming down here, then the spring would be just in this particular area. Considering what we were discussing, we can't actually say that's the only case. Because the market always does this, right? The price is being oversold then automatically it goes to the upside, it gets overbought. Now that happens in all different time frames. That's why we try to focus on longer time frame to understand what is actually happening. On a weekly, we can see that the price was on uh, oversold path and now it's kind of moving to the upside to become the overbought area. Now, when the price reaches the overbought area, what you have to understand is it kind of stays there for some time. Say here, the price just went into the overbought area. Here, the price just went into the overbought area. Still, the price, yeah, it was volatile, but it pumped 1000%, 2000%, 5000% each time when it was in that particular area. Now, when we look at the history, what we understand is whenever we are entering into the top area, overbought area here in the Wyckoff, we can actually understand we are moving in for a rally. Now that's on a weekly chart, right? Even if we go into a three-day chart, the um, assumption we, we will reach here is like previously, whenever we were coming just into that overbought area, we couldn't actually stand above that area. We were coming down. Now, this time we have actually managed to go above and now we are above the 200-day moving average as well on the three-day chart. Now, the Wyckoff principle, what it states is 
at the area where it is breaking above the previous highs here on that consolidation phase, we kind of will be making a small kind of bull flag before going to the upside, the mark up phase. So if that is to happen, say in a daily chart, when we look at the XRP and analyze that, here yeah, it can be like it may spend a couple of days consolidating at that area. Say the price may actually fluctuate between 0.25 to uh, 0.34 and then it breaks the 0.34 and goes to the upside. Similarly, when we actually look at the Ethereum chart, we may also find it interesting because it kind of represents something similar. As we uh, discussed yesterday, if we look at the uh, area of accumulation for uh, Ether, the price of Ether is now upside. Now the difference is the uh, Spring this time hasn't actually went way below this one, but it shows you kind of a slow grind to the upside consolidation and then a bounce to the upside going above that particular accumulation zone and currently staying above that. So the same can actually be seen here, but keep an eye as we are getting this continuation signal here, the same may happen if the next day is going green and going about this particular wick. So the highest of that wick was 409 for Ether and if we are going above that, that would be a continuation pattern showing us that we are going to the upside because if you look at the BTC chart, last time when it was going to the upside, it didn't actually give us a retest after that break. If you look, you can actually see similar region, similar price action in this particular area which was the accumulation zone for that. The price went into that area, it just blew off the top. It didn't actually come back or retest that area because the moving average was acting as a support by that time. And the moving average just pushed the price high and it went up to 14,000. And the low, remember, was around 3,200. So that was quite a bull run, right? So now comparing the same to XRP and looking at the chart, look at this uh, particular pattern here, right? And then the blow off. Uh, the uh, moving average is becoming the support and 200 day moving average becoming the support at the end when it was blowing off that accumulation zone. Now let's look at XRP USD in a same pattern. You'll understand something similar is being seen here right. Now that is on a different time frame on a daily chart you can see that the 200 day moving average was previously breached but when we move into a 3 day chart looking at XRP USD we can actually see something similar. We kind of blow off, we are going off the uh, accumulation zone at the same time we are coming above the 200 day moving average and the RSI and MACD is moving positive and bullish. Why, why I say that because we can actually get uh, the similar pattern in the price action, it is going to the upside when we look at the MACD, we can see that the price is reflecting the MACD is similarly, the RSI is also reflecting it similarly, we are not getting a divergence on a longer time frame. But if we actually go in look at uh, it on a smaller time frame, say forever, it kind of indicates us that there is a, still a chance that the price may actually uh, breathe, go take a breather because when we see this levels, previously uh, the MACD hasn't been this high soon like in the recent past, so they can be a breather taking in. And that breather, if we look at the RSI, we already actually went below this area. Now, if we are managing to come back above this, that's cool. If we are actually kind of consolidating in this particular area mm -hmm. and then moving to the upside, by that time, the price may actually reflect back into 0.25. But there are still chances that it may not come back down because it in the smaller time frame, you can see it already came back below. It's kind of bouncing from that low as it retested that accumulation zone. So if we are not going back again, that means we already did that kind of retest or the back test on a shorter time frame, not in a daily or a three day, but on a four hour. And that's kind of significant enough when we are actually moving above this one. So if we are to move above point three to now, that's kind of a confirmation that we won't be going back to check that. Now, that being said, keep in mind we have also we also have to break a long-term running resistance line, this one. Previously, it was a support line. Now, if you zoom, if you zoom out and take this uh, to this side, you can see it was a valid uh, trend line there and here, support and resistance. So, if we manage to break our 0.37, the next target would be so high. Why? Because taking the similar thing for that of uh, the altcoin market if we take this as a bottom see the two bottom were made here or this as the bottom we can actually if we measure to the top this will be the measured move right from this particular area say the bottom here and to the top here that gives us 700 percentage 
and from now we just broke above that and if we measure that 700 percentage in price uh, we would be reaching around 1.7 dollar and if we are going above one dollar the thing will be like four more madness you know every different kind of investors let it be short term long term they would be kind of you know the adrenaline will be coming in like oh i'm gonna mix this one so they will enter those who are waiting again for new lows or those who are waiting to uh, see a confirmation whether this is entering into a bull run will not have to wait much more once the price is crossing bullishly above 0 0.5 or one dollar they would be entering and that would be kicking the price much higher creating that kind of a fomo along with that that would be from the retail side right but when the price goes above the 0 0.3736 mark and reach the previous high of last year automatically it's for sure the retail and huge investors the investors from the uh, traditional industry would be eyeing this one now majority of them you know smart money would be already entered here and they would be waiting for a re-accumulation phase about the 0.5 area if you are looking that clearly then the question becomes are we accumulating in the accumulation zone or are you actually waiting for a re-accumulation zone to give you more confirmation about the uptrend now that kind of depends upon you for me my average is in this accumulation zone and i'm really happy to hold it that way i won't be buying more and more in this particular account and averaging my account to the upside instead yeah i would be creating one account another account for my better half and you know buying uh, the dips but that would not be investing that would be purely trading based on the technical analysis because for the fundamental analysis and technical analysis while i combine that it's kind of an investor's perspective for long term but for trading you should be you know concentrating more you should be checking the charts at least in four to three three to four hours gap looking at it or at least spend two to three hours daily for chart analysis and see where you should be buying the dip and common sense and easy way to do that is say for example when the price is actually coming to this is in the bear market when the price is going into the moving average range you can sell that the price comes to the bottom right so in the same case when the price is re retracting back and coming into uh, the moving average range it's kind of a buy area so that's for trading if you guys saw value in the video do support the channel hit that like button if you are new here and haven't subscribed to the account yet please do support the channel hit that subscribe button i'll meet you guys on the next video bye for now